day two at Sierra Space 2017. Today we're focusing on underwater technologies, submarines, torpedoes, UUVs, and swimmer delivery vehicles, such as this SDV that was fully 3D printed. This is the largest 3D printed object in uh, the DoD today. It is a optionally manned, it's a model of an optionally manned technology demonstrator. It was a design experiment. It took us about two weeks to, to design it and build it. 3D printing, now that you can see it in scale, will change the entire industrial base or perception of how to deliver a military. Mark 54 is an upgrade to the Mark 46 uh, torpedo. We've uh, had the honor of, uh, of having this uh, contract and, and doing this work for the United States Navy since 1999. Most recently, we were awarded a uh, production contract mid last year, 2016, to provide the upgrade kits to the uh, Mark 46 torpedo. So the new capability that the Mark 54 provides over the Mark 46 is it's designed for both deep water and littoral regions. It has sensing capability throughout the full water column and has increased capability against countermeasures and quieter uh, adversarial submarines. Certainly the United States Navy and many of our allies, we sell the uh, uh, upgrade kits and the torpedo through foreign military sales through our United States Navy. It's deployed from a number of platforms. The uh, MH-60 Romeo helicopter, fixed wing air aircraft, the P-8 uh, Poseidon, as well as surface ships. Boeing is also showcasing the Hawk high altitude anti submarine warfare capability. The Hawk provides an all weather anti submarine warfare weapon system capable of high altitude launch of the Mark 54 torpedo from a P 8 Poseidon maritime patrol aircraft. Hawk consists of a modular air launch accessory kit that attaches to the Mark 54 torpedo. It transforms the Mark 54 into a precision guided glide weapon which operates in either GPS aided or GPS denied environments. At the separation point, it deploys the Mark 28 stabilizer allowing the Mark 54 to achieve desired water entry conditions. Based on open architecture principles, the modular design leverages hardware and software from proven production programs. This is our UUV family. We have three UUVs on display, Echo Ranger, Echo Seeker, and Echo Voyager. Echo Voyager is our newest offering in our UUV family, designed to be host ship independent and to, to swim from a pier to go off and do missions. So the idea for Echo Voyager is it is essentially a diesel electric unmanned submarine. So it swims away from a pier, intended to be at sea for weeks and months at a time, uh, a range of approximately 6,000 nautical miles. So long endurance capability to be able to bring uh, multiple payloads into an area to do different missions at a different time without having to have a host vessel uh, in close proximity. So with Echo Voyager uh, being a diesel electric unmanned submarine, the water line is actually about here while the, when the vehicle is on the surface doing a, a recharge of batteries. Uh, the, the vehicle comes to near the surface, the masthead comes above the water, and then you start the diesel electric, uh, the diesel generators that charge the batteries. We actually, we, we did this on our own. Uh, we did uh, use our Navy experience to inform the design, but really this is a Boeing design based on our knowledge of the mission space. Teleda in Brown Engineering is showcasing its shallow water combat submersible or SeaWix. The company is under contract with the United States Special Operations Command to design, develop, test, manufacture and sustain the SeaWix, a replacement system for the current SEAL delivery vehicle. The SeaWix system is a manned combat submersible vehicle specifically designed to insert and extract special operation forces in high threat areas. U.S. SOCOM oversees these elite military tactical teams from the Army, Air Force, Navy and Marine Corps. 
The US Navy SEAL SeaWix is a 6.8 meters in length, 1.5 meters in height and width, and should be able to accommodate at least six Special Forces sailors. Good morning, Dan. Thanks for joining us. What do we have here? Well, this is a, a, a prototype model of our one of our designs for the new uh, modernized dry deck shelter that we're uh, building or designing for the Navy. Um, the goal is to um, make the shelter larger, to accommodate a, a larger, heavier payload, and to make it remotely operated so we can operate all the, all the systems within the dry deck shelter from inside the host submarine. Uh, so here we're showing uh, the, the payload launcher recovery system in an extended, uh, extended position where a, a, a payload would be here. Once it gets in this position, the SEALs would deploy and, and untether the, the vehicle and it would go off and do its thing. They would recover, they would re retrieve everything, and once the, 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 the payload or is done with its mission, they would recover the vehicle. This is being designed for the Virginia class submarine. Uh, the legacy systems are, are compatible with the, six, the Los Angeles class, the Virginia class, and the SSGNs. Um, but our, our new design, our new modernization, modernized concept is just for the Virginia class submarines. Merci, Xavier, for the chance to talk with you again here at Sea, Air and Space. Yeah, I'd be very happy to talk about, first of all, a new development is the Columbia class. We have named the ship class the Columbia after the District of Columbia here in Washington. We've made a lot of progress since we spoke last year here at Sea, Air and Space. The design continues and it has continued to mature. And perhaps I could talk to you about a little bit about some of the design features. We're now starting to build the missile tubes at our facility in Rhode Island. And those missile tubes will be built in what we call a quad pack, which is in my screen behind me, where we've introduced a new manufacturing process that's going to reduce the cost and the time it requires to build these missile tubes. And we're building them in what's called a common missile compartment. So we'll build 16 missile tubes. They will have the very long range, intercontinental range, to preserve that that strong, credible strategic deterrent. Another new feature for this class is the electric drive. It's a brand new, revolutionary new permanent magnet motor drive system. It'll be the first U.S. submarine class where the entire class is propelled by this electric drive technology. The other features retain a number of the different technologies and capabilities that were in the previous Trident class. Uh, that's to control cost and to reduce the risk of this very aggressive program. So a much larger submarine, new technology on the same time frame. So we've got to have the right cap capacity, we've got to have the right facilities, we've got to have the right workforce, very highly trained, highly skilled workforce. All those things are moving on track. Uh, and so the program, we're looking forward to starting this and delivering the, the first Columbia class here in the near future. Uh, can you tell us about wave glider specifically for defense application? Sure. So the wave glider is an ocean robotic platform. It's autonomous. It executes at sea for up to a year. The propulsion comes from wave energy. So there's no engine. There's no cr crew. There's no fuel. It's literally the up and down bobbing motion of the ocean pulls the wings up and down much like a, a fin uh, would articulate in the ocean to provide its propulsion. Solar power drives all the compute and communications on board. We have cellular, Wi-Fi, satellite communications. In addition, we'll process information that we gather from the sensors that we're hosting, process that, that information on board, and then send a result back uh, to shoreside systems, aircraft, or satellite. 
the purpose of what we do is to uh, gather information we couldn't be tracking submarines, uh, tracking surface vessels, doing work for oil and gas and science and other you know, commercial kind of entities, but from a defense perspective, this is an unmanned robotic sensor platform that can gather data and provide that intelligence back to a defense organization. In your opinion, what makes uh, the Wave Glider unique? Well, it's the beginning of a revolution, um, taking low-cost, unmanned, autonomous systems into this very complex domain and starting to complement all of the existing manned and expensive systems. And, of course, the evolution of technology, computing power, data processing, communication, is going to make them more and more effective. So it's a very exciting development. Can you uh, tell us about uh, the performance of the Wave Glider uh, last year during the Unman Warrior exercise? Yes, well, it's exceptional. Um, I mean, I don't know whether you know, but there was some very bad weather uh, during um, uh, parts of the Unmanned Warrior. And this was one of the vehicles that was quite capable of operating in very high sea states because most of its work's being done below the surface. And indeed, the larger the swell, the faster it will go. So we're very pleased with progress. And, and uh, I believe that it's one of the vehicles that's going to contribute most to the future of both operational and non-military uh, value in the future.